when we had started out that morning, it was raining and drizzling and cold, not very nice. Elizabeth Forsling Harris uh, was a Democratic uh, Party organizer for the Kennedy the visit. Night, the and when the skies night, cleared the later that morning in Dallas, she urged the Secret Service to take the famous bubble top off the presidential car so the crowds could see Kennedy. It was years before I found out that uh, uh, the bubble top would not deflect a bullet, much less stop one. But I used to wake up in the middle of the night still thinking, if only I had done something else, or if I had not done what I did do. All the cars, the official cars in the, limo, in the uh, motorcade, and the presidential limo was one of them, and it, the bubble top was up. And uh, the bubble top was, uh, was a, a one quarter inch thick plexiglass, and it was designed strictly for, it wasn't bulletproof Not or bulletproof. any of that. No, a lot of people thought it was, but it wasn't. At any rate, the Secret Service agent who was standing at the top of the ramp, I happened to know, because I was a federal reporter. He was the local agent in charge of the Dallas office of the Secret Service. And I said, it said to him, Mr. Soros, I see the bubble top is up. Rewrite wants to know if it's going to be up during the thing. And he looks up at the sky. I'll never forget this. He looks up at the sky, and it's clear. And he says, well, and he yells down at an agent with a two, who's got a two-way radio. He says, check it downtown. What's it like downtown? And the guy goes, blah, 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 blah. And then he says, clear downtown. And the agent that I'm talking to then yells to the other agents who are in charge of the, of the motorcade, lose the bubble top. So they take the bubble top down. I go. And the president of the United States. We arose that morning early to go out and prepare the cars because it was raining and and uh, we were trying to make a decision whether to leave the bubble top on or off. Skies broke and so I said well there's a decision right there no tops because we are there on a political motorcade and uh, President Kennedy wanted to meet the people. I was driving the follow-up car right behind him. Another line of protection for the president that wasn't used was the limousine's bubble top. The bubble top was a plexiglass covering that was put on the car, the presidential limousine, the conventional wisdom that it was bulletproof or bullet resistant. Turns out it was not bulletproof or bullet resistant in the standard way we think of that. However, it was a psychological deterrent because most people assumed it was bulletproof. Popular belief has it that the limousine's bubble top was not used for two reasons. One, because what started as an overcast and dreary day turned sunny and clear. The actual films and photos of several motorcades shows the bubble top on in the brightest weather conditions imaginable. So there's a myth that it was only on there for inclement weather. Not true. The bottom line with the bubble top would have done is it would have obscured an assassin's view via the sun's glare. The second reason most often given as to why the bubble top had not been used is that the president had requested not to use it. But I spoke to the agent who was the driver of the follow-up car, Sam Kinney. Sam Kinney adamantly on three different occasions told me that President Kennedy had nothing to do with it. It was solely his responsibility. The bubble top came in six pieces, but sometimes it's on there for just the front and rear pieces were on. So it would be an open car and some semblance of protection as well. A partial bubble top with the front and rear pieces on, and he would be able to get air to be able to stand up and he didn't have that configuration. It's a question of why. Why wasn't at least that configuration used in Dallas? It, you know, this is a good question. Get to the heart of the matter. One, one thing about all this controversy and that. Well, one thing that came out in these documents, is it true? Were you responsible for the bubble top going on the car? You were, okay. Because one of the things that makes out is that supposedly, here I hear JFK said, get that, I'm quoting now, get that gun in bubble top off unless it's raining. There was that comment. That is not true. Uh, George Hickey and I were in Dallas the night before it happened. And it was raining. Uh, now they were staying in uh, Lake uh, Fort Worth. Down rain. And it's only about a 10 minute flight. It takes about 20 minutes, you know, to get airborne and get your flight back. 
the rest of what it is, is it's unfortunate because, you know, people are going to be reading these books instead of, you know, taking the time to do any primary research, and unfortunately they're going to think, oh, well, hey, that makes sense to me, Kennedy didn't want the bubble top off, and so forth, and, you know, not that there's any sense to me, you know, the bubble top wasn't even bulletproof, I mean, that was a, that's a dodge either way, but just, just for what it's worth, you know, history has proclaimed that he was very authoritarian, and the only, the only thing that bubble top may have uh, made a difference is, may have been distorted. Hardly put in a busier weekend than this one in New York. First, Get him away at last. Back to Bur
una común determinación para preservarla y extender sus frutos a todos. el carro del, del presidente y el gobernador, seguido por un carro de capota abierta en el cual irán eh, miembros de la policía secreta de la seguridad del presidente. En el tercer carro también de capota eh, transparente, la señora Kennedy y la señora Muñoz. Está preparándose para salir la caravana desde el aeropuerto. Todavía no se ha movido el primer carro que es el que lleva al presidente. Después de estos primeros carros irán los demás con los miembros de la comitiva presidencial y los carros que ustedes habrán de ver por el camino y algunos de ustedes van a ver aquí en la televisión antes de terminar esta transmisión son de fotógrafos y camarógrafos tanto local como de Estados Unidos que han llegado y están cubriendo todo este desfile, toda esta llegada del presidente Kennedy irán tomando vistas a todo lo largo de la avenida Valdoriotti hasta San Juan ahí va el auto del presidente y el gobernador saliendo de la pista de... North Carolina. Here, hard-hitting, battle-ready units armed with the latest weapons are prepared to go into combat at any level of the...
will enlarge as a result of it, and our friendship will get stronger. Full military honors are paid to President Ayub, World War II veteran of the Burma Front and the former commander of his country's armed forces. In Mr. Kennedy's new presidential limousine, the two presidents acknowledge the cheers of the throngs. The end of the parade finds the presidential party at the Blair House, the president's official guest house, where the distinguished... ...solid black steel, and the other was uh, transparent plastic, and these different groups were put together in separate sections, so you could put them on the car if you needed to protect the president from inclement weather.
here. Was killed. The Secret Service agents normally walk directly beside the car on either side. We do not see any in this photograph, but usually uh, two or three Secret Service agents will walk on either side of the car uh, so that they are there to uh, spot any, anyone who looks like a, a troublemaker. Uh, for firing a shot. It's most unusual, incidentally, that such a thing could happen because of the uh, unusually tight security measures that are ordinarily taken by the uh, Secret Service who guard the President. And uh, normally any vantage point, a rooftop, and uh, windows which command uh, a parade route are carefully scrutinized and carefully guarded and men are usually posted on rooftops along a parade route uh, particularly if there is any any reason at all to suppose that there might be someone in the area who uh, would have uh, uh, such ideas as assassination in his mind regarding the president these precautions of course are taken by the secret service for all presidents as they have been for many years.
episode made me angry. It didn't make me angry. We're talking about the President of the United States. And uh, I'm not a holier than thou guy. And in the 1960s, I believe that we can demonstrate so that all the world will want to follow our example that freedom and prosperity can move hand in hand. I express our thanks to you, and I can tell you... In Mr. Kennedy's new presidential limousine, the two presidents acknowledge the cheers of the throngs. The end of the parade finds the presidential party at the Blair House, the president's official guest house, where the distinct... Mr. Kennedy's new limousine, the through the streets of Berlin began. The entire route was lined with people who had waited hours to see the president, the man dedicated to the defense of peace and freedom. Never before had the Berliners turned out in such large numbers. Never was a reception so rousing. And here also is one of the dramatic points where Ost and West sich gegenüberstehen. Wenn Berlin ein Vorposten der freien Welt ist, dann ist der Checkpoint Charlie einer der vorgeschobensten Posten, der am weitesten vorgeschobenen Posten der Soldaten des Präsidenten. dort heimkehrende Helden der Nation gefeiert werden. Der Weg John F. Kennedys zum Schöneberger Rathaus wird zu einer einzigen Triumphfahrt. Kennedy hat auf eigenen Wunsch auf den Platz in der Mitte des Wagens verzichtet, um sich gelegentlich wegen seiner Rückenschmerzen seitlich am Wagenrand abstützen zu können. Von den Strapazen der letzten Tage ist ihm jetzt aber nichts anzumerken. General Lucius D. Clay, Initiator der Berliner Luftbrücke, die die Stadt während der zehnmonatigen sowjetischen Blockade am Leben hielt und den die Berliner deshalb außerordentlich lieben, 
der mit dem Präsidenten nach Deutschland gekommen ist. Er sagt zu ihm, bevor dieser Tag zu Ende gegangen ist, werden sie 90 Prozent der Berliner gesehen und kennengelernt haben. Herr Salinger, Kennedys Pressechef, ein eher hartgesottener Mann, sagt später, dieser Empfang in Berlin ist der größte, der dem Präsidenten irgendwo in der Welt zuteil geworden ist. Am frühen Vormittag hat Kennedy den Gewerkschaftstag der IG Bausteine Erden in der Berliner Kongresshalle besucht. In einer kurzen Ansprache hat er dort betont, freie Gewerkschaften seien eine wichtige Voraussetzung für das Funktionieren der Demokratie. Freiheit aber sei nicht nur ein Ziel, sondern auch ein Mittel und ein Weg für ein besseres Leben aller Menschen auf dieser Erde. Freiheit und ihre Unteilbarkeit ist das Grundmotiv der Rede, die John F. Kennedy vor dem Stöneberger Rathaus halten wird. Sie ist mitbestimmt von den Eindrücken, die er an der Berliner Mauer erhalten hat und die ihn tief bewegt haben. Kennedy sagt, die Mauer sei die abscheulichste und stärkste Demonstration für das Versagen des kommunistischen Systems. Und was für Berlin gelte, das gelte auch für ganz Deutschland. Ein echter Friede in Europa könne nicht gewährleistet werden, solange jedem vierten Deutschen das Recht der freien Wahl vorenthalten würde. War die Ansprache in der Frankfurter Paulskirche die inhaltlich bedeutendste?
America, December 1961. This covers uh, Puerto Rico trip. There you go. There's the bubble top, agents by the car. Where the people make no secret of how warmly they feel about their guests. President Kennedy's destination now, the offices. And the other was uh, transparent plastic, and these different groups were put together. By laying wreaths at the tombs of two of Mexico's heroes, and then attending mass at the holiest of that nation's shrines, the Basilica of Guadalupe. They are greeted by the primate Archbishop of Mexico, Miguel Gomez, who later led a prayer in English for the full success to all efforts made during the President's visit. After Mass, the Kennedys head for the airport and then home to Washington. Last week, there was uncertainty in capital circles about the President's reception in Mexico. It turned out to be one of his greatest triumphs in personal diplomacy. Friendship with personal warmth and with a personal welcome. for the Army, Air Force, and our allies. that's relaying our TV signal from the uh, mobile camera in the parade room. The uh, police uh, drive by quite frequently, uh, helping the Marines keep the crowd in check. The Marines, by the way, are stationed at 54th and El Cajon, where we have one of the biggest crowds of the route, are stationed about every five or six feet apart, and they certainly have their hands full in keeping these people back because everybody's leaning forward, pushing to the front, knowing that the president's about to go by. The band in the background, Crawford High School Band, striking up. 
hoping that the president will be here any moment and uh, wanting to play some uh, stirring march music for him. May I again point out that the picture you see is not from 54th and El Cajon. The two press trucks, including a live mobile feed, still in motion photography, and more importantly, Marines facing the crowd five to six feet apart. It's from uh, a vantage point about four blocks west of where we are, looking west and seeing the first of the uh, motorcade as it goes by. And that's part of the crowd, the crowd lining the streets, lots of children, the Marines with their hands full. The motorcycle officer, I understand, has been instructed to make sure that everybody does not get out into the street. No reports of whether or not he has uh, run over any toes or not, but uh, doing a good job of keeping them by. Now, the presidential motorcade is approaching 54th and El Cajon. Everybody here is on his feet. The people are beginning to cheer. The people behind me are, of course, quite expectant and uh, quite, uh, quite excited about this occasion. First car coming by our camera at 54th and El Cajon is one of the lead cars on the motorcade. Behind it, the officers on their motorcycles with their red lights blazing. <laughs> 